thank you for coming to uh, CBS Executive Lunch, a uh, conversation with CEOs. Uh, today, we have the honor to have with us James Chang. James Chang graduated from Jaton University, started his career at state-owned enterprises in China, uh, Citic Corporation, moved to the US to pursue a master's degree in Stanford, had an impressive career at Bechel in both US and China, and in 2006, he joined Tata and currently serves as president of Tata Group China. So, uh, James, thank you very much. You have an absolutely uh, amazing career. And in a way, I see you as an example of uh, many Chinese that are coming back to China after having this uh, global experience. Yeah? You started in a state-owned enterprise in China, then went to a company in the US, and now back to China as head of a very huge uh, Indian group, Tata. Can you tell us uh, it was by design or by chance? Uh, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Fernandez. CEIBS uh, is a very prestigious uh, school, and uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, experience with, uh, with uh, your school. Uh, thank you very much. For your question, uh, no career is um, uh, uh, by design. It all happened by a series of uh, unplanned events. When I finished school in Shanghai, and China was uh, just opening up, and um, CITIC was recruiting. CITIC was a startup with a, um, a few hundred employees. So I was uh, uh, very curious. Went to Beijing, interviewed, and uh, they took me. Very exciting um, early years. Then there's opportunity to study in the U.S. So I took it. Uh, CITIC colleagues and my friends uh, suggest I stay in the U.S. for a while. So I stayed there. Um, I joined uh, Bechtel, wanted to come back to China. So uh, there's an opportunity with the Bechtel Corporation. I returned to Hong Kong and uh, doing many of the Chinese uh, business and Chinese uh, investment projects. At a certain time, um, Headhunter find me, uh, asked me whether I want to try a diff something different. Then I joined the Tata. I thought it was a very unique uh, company, a very unique group, and uh, that will give me a very different uh, perspective. So that happened. So nothing came by design. But we can say that you were ready to take the opportunities. You have to make choices. That you, do you want to stay in China? You want to leave? Now I took the make decision to leave. And uh, when I was in the U.S., do you want to stay? You want to return? So I got Hong Kong, and um, then you have still have a choice: so stay in Hong Kong or coming back to where you came from. That, that was by choice. In my conversations with uh, CEOs of multinationals, one observation is that uh, the number of Chinese occupying those high positions is growing, and many of them have a similar background. Uh, than you, an international career before coming to China. Uh, how important is to have this international experience to reach that high level in multinational organizations in China? I think in the past it, you probably have to, uh, to be able to connect to the headquarters, to understand where the company you know, you're working on, where it is coming from, uh, the, their customer base, their product, their culture. And then uh, when you work in China, you have to coordinate with uh, all of your colleagues back to their home country. And uh, if you don't have that background, it is uh, pretty difficult to connect, to communicate. Uh, the communication skills is always most important thing when you move higher. And going forward, um, uh, maybe less so. China become a, becomes very um, international. Some of the very uh, capable managers, uh, they probably never worked in the home uh, headquarters. 
but uh, they have a certain international experience, uh, maybe study, maybe certain uh, training, uh, but uh, with extensive work in the Chinese market, uh, probably they can still do that. Now, when I think of multinationals, what comes to my mind are US, Europe, and Japan. There are few multinationals that come from other countries. Uh, Tata, in a way, is one of those, a very successful one. You enter China, I'm very successful in China. Do you see that there are more of these companies, uh, multinationals coming from other countries than those three? And uh, what are the factors that make them successful in China? First, for Tata, uh, Tata is uh, quite international. So um, it, it has um, uh, over two thirds of the business coming from outside India. It's major subsidiaries. Uh, Tata Motors, uh, probably 80% of the business is uh, Jaguar Land Rover. Big operations in UK, US, China. For Tata Steel, they have a major part of the Tata Steel Europe acquired Tata Consultancy Services, TCS. They have um, probably 90% of their business in uh, outside India, mostly it's in the US and Europe. So, um, Tata essentially is a, a very international, in certain way, is uh, quite similar to those um, U.S. multinationals. There, there, there will be other uh, multinationals uh, um, in, in a different way, like uh, in Asia. There are many uh, multinationals from other countries also doing uh, very successful business in China. You joined Tata in year 2006. That's a, a long time ago. China was a very different country then, yeah? Uh, during this time, uh, you witnessed uh, many changes. The changes in Chinese consumers, uh, emerging of uh, domestic competitors, Chinese uh, uh, companies, and also all the digital uh, revolution. Uh, how Tata has adapted to these changes? Uh, it's a long, long question and um uh, basically, by uh, many attempts to try to understand the market, we always try to duplicate something that was uh, successful in other countries. Um, uh, and we also always try the original plan idea, but we have to modify. For example, in early years, uh, the luxury car is a very tiny uh, part of the auto market in China. And nobody thought it's going to explode it to where we are today. We have this luxury car business, uh, Jaguar Land Rover. It was a very small. There were 20 people in China uh, with uh, dealing with the distributors. Uh, but that business started to show signs of uh, explosive growth. Then Jaguar Land Rover, of course, together with uh, Tata Motors and uh, the Tata Group, uh, start to think what's the best way. And then structure the business uh, to become a, a wholly owned uh, uh, trading company. Uh, moving from there, there's a domestic um, manufacturing looks like uh, uh, the way to go to lower cost. Uh, and then gradually uh, we move to the GV. Looking back, uh, that was a revolution of uh, uh, consumption uh, in China. Uh, for manufacturing, uh, steel cup, we used to have a few steel plants. And we also have other uh, few manufacturing, small manufacturing plants. Um, but uh, the market has become uh, too competitive. Um, you have to have a size in steel making business. Eventually, we sold our uh, ownership to our Chinese partners. Uh, we become a more for steel become a sourcing company, and that steel sourcing and trading business have become a pretty substantial. Um, I think that's a suit both the what Chinese market uh, can provide and also what Tata needs in Tata's home market in India and uh, the um, uh, steel market in Europe. Every year, uh, try to explore various ways to capitalize China's uh, capability. 
as a market uh, to sell product, as a marketed source uh, product, uh, source equipment, and uh, source technologies. Any given time, we try many different things. If it doesn't work, uh, we dropped, uh, we closed down, uh, and it focused on a more successful initiative. One thing that uh, Tata, uh, my opinion, is very strong is in all the digital. And you see China, is, uh, is, there is this digital revolution. Yeah? How do you, from your point of view, see all these uh, digital changes taking place in, chi in China? And what is Tata doing to take advantage or, or cooperate or participate in that revolution? Well, uh, compared to the changes in China, what Tata has done uh, is not enough. We should have done more. Uh, but uh, we're, we're trying. Number one, our key digital arm is uh, TCS. They provide IT business process outsourcing business for banks, insurance companies, telecom, uh, consumer product companies. Um, in China, we're trying uh, to replicate our experience uh, with a certain success. TCS uh, was the core banking service provider for Bank of China with um, about 20,000 branches. What we captured is a, a very small piece of uh, the big digital business uh, that's uh, growing very fast in China. Uh, but uh, uh, we're still trying to strategize how to, how to do it. For example, the government, uh, for example, the services to the likes of Alibaba, Tencent, Huawei. Uh, and uh, many smaller, uh, smaller players, and uh, also the cloud business. We are uh, also working on uh, some specific verticals like uh, auto design, especially uh, electric vehicle auto design. We designed um, Neo, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, electric vehicle company, uh, Weilai Qichu. Uh, Neo and uh, we have uh, uh, done design for Beijing Auto for their electric vehicle, for Guangzhou Auto, their electric vehicle. In auto electronics, we're doing the ADAS system, uh, uh, active safety, uh, uh, autonomous driving assistance uh, system. So we're trying, but uh, compared to the size of the market, what, I've achieved, what we have achieved is uh, a tiny part of it. We could do. Um, there's a lot more potential. Uh, how do you see the China business landscape evolving in the next, let's say, 10 years, in terms of uh, international company coming into China and Chinese companies going abroad? And it's a very difficult answer. Uh, over the long term, foreign companies will be uh, quite successful. Uh, in China and the Chinese company will be successful overseas. However, in the short term, uh, we, have a, we have a number of challenges. First, for foreign companies in China, I would like to make a bold prediction. Um, many foreign companies will fail in China or uh, not achieving their original goal because Chinese, uh, Chinese market is very, very competitive. You have to have a very unique product or services that um, your Chinese competitors cannot do or cannot do well with a competitive price. We have seen so many uh, Chinese companies in various of uh, stage of development from early stage to uh, growth stage to uh, almost, almost the market dominant uh, stage in various vertical sectors. They have um, a very different um, uh, management philosophy. Mostly they are private. Um, they have learned so much. They are funded by very intelligent um, Chinese entrepreneurs educated overseas, or mostly many of them work in, over, uh, in multinational companies. They have learned advantages of the disadvantages of uh, MNC operating in China. 
these are a fundamental uh, competitive factors in the market that uh, MSCs have to deal with. MSC uh, comes to China with the uh, with the packages, like uh, their overhead is uh, more expensive. They have coordinated with the um, headquarters, so the response times uh, slower. When you can overcome those issues, then you can be successful. But I don't see all of them can do that. So for Chinese companies going overseas, similarly, when you are very successful in China, when you go overseas, your mindset is more like Chinese. And、uh, when you go overseas, you think the the way successfully implemented in China would be successful in overseas. It's actually not. You have seen many of the challenges Chinese companies facing when they acquire foreign companies.、Uh, many of the、uh, very expensive acquisitions to the smaller acquisitions.、Uh, put this way, all the MNC's mistakes they made in China are being made by the Chinese companies overseas. In addition, the Chinese companies.、Uh, um, They have、uh, more drab,、uh, drawbacks. If it is a、uh, being family owned, you have the command and control issue. I cannot respond quickly. If it's a SOE, then you have、uh, a reporting system that's、uh, very inefficient in dealing with、uh, the U.S., European, or Latin America, or even Asian market, and、um, the time. Difference also is an issue. The cultural difference.、I、have not seen a, a easy way to overcome this in the short term. Probably we need a, another generation of uh, uh, international managers, uh, uh, entrepreneurs. When China is more open, you can absorb international talents in China and use the talent to go overseas. Probably is a better way. Uh, but it's a big cultural issue. I don't see a short-term solution for this. It doesn't mean Chinese company will not be successful in exporting products. China will continue to sell excellent product to overseas market. But it, when you talk about over direct investment, let the foreign market see you as a, one of them. That will take time. Currently, they are talking about this decoupling. You know. Separating China from the rest of the world, you think that is realistic? Is something that will happen?、Uh, it's not realistic, but it is happening. At least um, uh, in terms of a direct investment, in terms of a people exchange, and、uh, probably less so in terms of export of products.、Uh, my next question is about the two countries that you know well, India and China. Both of them are the biggest markets in the world.、Uh, are they taking advantage in their business relationship of that opportunities? Both countries are trying. Two-way trade was、uh, around the fifty-eight billion dollars in favor of、uh, China. China's、uh, street surplus is close to forty billion dollars last year. India wants to sell more to China. The challenge is、um, probably Indians are better off、uh, by、uh, use their competitive advantage,、uh, use the Chinese、uh, industrial products to、uh, their own use,、uh, then to help the making Indian process、um, uh, use Chinese experience to speed up that process.、Uh, India has other. Competitive advantage, like the software export to the U.S.、Um, to other countries. In the end, India is running a trade balance, but、uh, with the world, but、uh, not with China. Both countries could do more.、Uh, however, there are political issues. The reason the border issue,、uh, the restriction on Chinese investment in India, and the、uh, suspension of.、Uh, Mobile apps in India, and、um, so far, 
China has been very refrained, not uh, uh, trying to retaliate, because China is uh, uh, careful with this uh, trading partner uh, with a huge surplus. What could it do more is the investment, but the investment is there's an issue. Um, Indians are very cautious about Chinese investment. What Indian could do more is south of China more, and uh, that's happening with us. We're uh, taking advantage of uh, Chinese uh, the robust uh, uh, market demand, selling recently new products because Indian's market at this time is uh, uh, slow. So we would like to use this uh, opportunity to uh, sell our excess product to China. Uh, and uh, we're, we're doing more. In the future, I'm uh, quite uh, positive that uh, the countries uh, will work out their differences because economic needs uh, will overwhelm their political differences. In, in the end, the most challenging issue is uh, how to industrialize the nation with a, a feasible way. The way that Indian followed in the past, tried to uh, replicate the Western countries' uh, development strategy, probably is um, not uh, easily implemented in India because the market is, uh, this, this population is so large, the, the basic infrastructure is not there. Uh, and China has shown the world another way how to develop from a very low level uh, to median developed country with um, infrastructure, with a mass mobilization of the population to manufacturing. Um, this is a very important experience for India. You know, in the MBA, our biggest uh, uh, international students body come from India. Uh, as president of an Indian company in China, do you have any advice for them looking to develop their career in China? Uh, there are many successful Indian executives working in China. So all of them are uh, role models for the MBA students. Uh, if I go deeper, probably those uh, senior executives have been through many different uh, routes. Uh, they've been working in many different countries. And, and now in China, uh, because they are business uh, quite international or their customers quite international. For MBAs uh, in their early career, if they want to develop a career in China, uh, you need to be uh, thinking uh, what kind of a job you want to take on and what job is available. If the job requires a very intensive uh, uh, interaction with the uh, Chinese government, uh, Chinese consumers, or Chinese uh, uh, suppliers, then the Chinese language becomes very important. Not just verbal, but a written Chinese language. Uh, you have to be uh, uh, mindful. There are other roles uh, for the MBAs. That's uh, to develop India or the South Asia markets for international companies or for Chinese companies. Uh, similar to the, the case that the Chinese students studied in the U.S. After finishing, they joined the U.S. company and U.S. company sent them to uh, their home country or uh, nearby country, left to Asia, to develop a business. So that's another way to do it. At this time, I see there's an there's issue for Chinese investment in India. So that uh, approach probably will take a little bit more time. Um, uh, but you, you see the successful examples of Xiaomi is hiring the Indian CEO, uh, TikTok, uh, all the tech company they have for Indian um, uh, head in India, for India. Uh, but uh, that uh, is not enough. We need a more Chinese company, traditional companies to go to India. Uh, there are always opportunities, uh, even working in China, because your customer can, even in China, your customer can be foreign companies, uh, can be foreign consumers, can be that many. Uh, Indian 
students uh, advantages uh, their English is uh, uh, better um, their the way of thinking is less uh, strict Indian managers uh, they have a, a more flexible mindset uh, able to handle ambiguities better thank you thank you very much it's been a great uh, great conversation and um, I, I wish you the best and uh, perhaps I see you soon here in Shanghai. Thank you.